Here's how it works. Mark comes in with us on Mondays and brings us music that we may not be otherwise familiar with. Artists we, we may not know. Music from artists we do know, but maybe we didn't know they'd produced recently. And we learn a little something. Today we're doing something a little bit different, Mark. We're going back in history. We're going uh, back. Peoria Peak in history, right? We're going back to meet a guy that I have been acquainted with i would say that i would be stretching it if i say our guests and i have been friends over these years but we've been friendly over the years mm -hmm. his name is bloody mess and back in the day it wasn't all it seems like just yesterday to me bloody mess and the scabs tore up central illinois in the punk rock scene uh i, I don't remember the years but he's on the phone with us all the way from oregon this morning where it's painfully early bloody good morning Good morning, my friend. What's going on, man? What years were we talking when when you guys were tearing it up? Well, my music career in Peoria started in 1983, but Bloody Mess and the Scabs started performing together in 1988. In 88, and it's in 88 till when? Mid 90s, late 90s? Uh, probably. We broke up in um, Wilmington, Delaware. We, we were on tour in 1994, and uh, <laughs> it was our Hungover and Stone tour, and we broke up in Delaware. Uh, was there, right. wait, wait a minute. You, you, you have to tell us all now what exactly <laughs> happened as cleanly as you possibly can. Uh, what happened at that moment? Why did that happen that day? Well, I, it's definitely got to be clean, because if I told you the specifics, uh, we'd all get arrested, okay. probably. No. Um, <laughs> we were on stage We were on stage in Wilmington, Delaware, a after having been on the road for a couple of weeks playing New York City and, you know, Pennsylvania and different parts of the East Coast. And, you know, we were a lot younger, and we were a shock rock band, and we were consuming lots of chemicals and, and you know, little pleasures of life back then. And it just, it just got to be too much. Everything just came to a head after all those years and all the chaos and craziness and when we got to Wilmington, Delaware somebody literally looked at me and said, are you trying to look like Mick Jagger? I'm like, what? And they were making fun of my appearance and it was a really homophobic sort of scene and I just, and I had it. After like three songs I said, you know what? I quit. I'm done. So we got yeah. in the van and we drove wow. 17 hours back to Illinois and that was it. Well, did you grow, uh, <laughs> back, back me up, uh, or back it up. Yeah. You grew up here? You grew up in central Illinois? I did. I spent most of my uh, life in central Illinois, um, having lived in Colorado briefly and uh, down by St. Louis briefly, but mostly in Peoria. And so how did the band start? What, what was going on? What, what made you even attracted to music? How did that all begin for you? Well, my mother was a big music fan, and all my life she turned me on to pop music, rock music, and country music. So I grew up liking all of that stuff, and I fortunately grew up in the 70s and where music was really good, and, you know, all of that was great. Rock and roll, pop, and country was great in the, in the 70s. So it kind of opened my mind to that, and I just... Uh, decided I wanted to either be a radio DJ or a musician or a singer, and I did both. There you go, man. Yeah. I'm going to go back real quick. Yeah. Yeah. What did you say to the crowd after <laughs> the third song? Was it like in Forrest Gump when Tom Hanks just stops <laughs> running and then turns and goes, I want to go home I want to go home, though. <laughs> well, there was one word that started with the letter F and another word that started with the letter Y. <laughs> and then you left. And then you turned yeah, around. And it was well, then I showed them my little birdie, and then I left. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. No, that's the way you would do that. <laughs> Mark, what do you got? I just, you know, um, bloody, this is Mark Algini, and uh, I came to Peoria about five years ago, so I'm still learning the legendary story of uh, a bloody mess and the scabs. Um, but uh, in my research, you worked with some... Uh, some some heavy punk rockers and again a couple of weeks ago i got to mention iggy pop and henry rollins on this radio station so now i get to mention gg allen it was was bloody mess kind of in that same style as gg well we were birds of a feather he was a little bit more extreme than i was personally but we were friends and i wrote music for some of his albums and he was on the same record label as Sonic Youth, and I wrote some music for his, some of his records. And I also toured with him a couple of years in a row. 
And, um, yeah, it was really interesting. <laughs> I bring him up because I, I, I went to university and college in, in Boston when he first came out onto the scene, and I was telling Greg off the air about Gigi and going, you sure you want to put this bloody mess guy on the radio? <laughs> oh, yeah. I trust bloody. I've known, I've known bloody long enough to trust you. Like, I don't, I'm, yeah. like I'm, afraid to tell, I'm afraid to tell Greg to Google Gigi Allen. No, yeah. I'm not going to Google Gigi. Hey, Bloody Mess is uh, with us. It's 844 WMBD, Greg and Dan Show. It's Music Monday with Mark Algini. Uh, I do want to say uh, that I'm excited to hear that you're heading back this way this spring, and you're going to be playing in Peoria, or at least the Peoria area, in April. Is that right? Yeah, I have a band called Divine Dirt, and my ninth studio album is out, and we are hitting the road. Our first show of the Midwest tour is in Peoria, April 19th at the Peoria Pizza Works. Very nice. Hey, listen to this. Here we go. The Divine Dirt CD I'm holding is from the Underworld. This is... I can't remember which one I'm playing here. What do I got? Howling at the Moon? Is that what that is? Can you tell? Yeah. That's Howling at the Moon. Yeah, it's Howling at the Moon. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I've been to Pure Pizza Works. Yeah. Uh, you guys start blowing this up. Uh, the pizza's blowing right out into the alley. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's going to be unbelievable. <laughs> they have a great room back there. They the do works. have a great room. Yeah. That's a great place for you guys to play. How is it now? Because, you know, the grind of a tour and then your style of music was is so energetic that it, you just, I, physically, you got to wear down. Are you, are you approaching it a little more differently this time? Not really. You know, I, I kind of hit the floor running. The minute I wake up in the morning, I'm like ready to go, man. And I just, I'm 52 years old now, but uh, I, I still have the exact same energy that I had when I was 18. So I'm blessed in that department. And, um, you know, I've survived. Uh, most of my counterparts are dead or like retired, but I'm just kind of still doing it. You know, I have a really high energy show and probably the best band of my entire career right now. So I'm really excited to bring it to Peoria because I think people are going to really uh, freak out when they see what I am bringing compared to what I brought last time. It's you know, it's always been good, but these guys are like the best band I've ever had. So yeah, awesome, I'm pretty, man. pretty excited. Andy Friend, Jesse Lee, and David Valley, is that how you pronounce his last name? Uh, uh, yeah, and actually Andy... And Andy Friend, my longtime guitar player, just left the band recently for personal reasons. And we have Skylar Sculio on guitar, who coincidentally has been my favorite guitar player since I've been in Oregon for eight uh, years. Nice, so man. I'm really blessed cool. to have that guy in the band. He's really good. Hey, I know your buddy uh, Marty Wombacher uh, uh, is excited for you to come back. I don't know if you remember Marty or not, but he's one of your biggest fans. And he's he, not a punk rocker, but he lives he the could life. Be. He <laughs> could be. No, he be. is. He kind of is. Yeah, like. He could be. Hey, hey, do you oh, do yeah, a, I love I love Marty. Yeah, I, okay, I didn't know if you remembered Marty cuz sometimes Marty remembers friends that don't remember him. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I was really I was good friends with his brother who passed away uh, years ago, Swami, Swami and so yeah. we kind of became really good friends and I yeah. wrote for his old magazine, People of Peoria back in the day too. <laughs> oh my god. All these memories, man. And uh, the other thing I was going to ask you or to tell people if they you do a radio show from Oregon, a podcast, right? Is that a pod Where can people listen no, to it? No, actually, that? it's a it's a 19-year running FM radio show and we are syndicated on three different FM frequencies in Oregon and California. Gotcha. And it's strictly um, an FM show that's also broadcast you know via live streaming on the net but um yeah we've been doing it every sunday night um since it started on the original wwct rock 106 in peoria right all the way awesome. to 1999 dude that's so cool and, uh, and and what uh where do we find it uh if we're going to look for it online what do we look for you can uh, go online at kfkq.org, and right. we broadcast Sunday nights from 7 to 9 uh, p.m. Pacific time. We'll link, all, it, it, we'll link everybody up. Is it a, is it a, a, a punk rock show, kind of like Dan Aykroyd did the blues? No, it's actually a very diverse rock and roll radio show. We had Craig Chikiso from Jefferson Starship came in recently and uh, did a, like a live in a, like played on the air with us. We've had Wavy Gravy from Woodstock on a lot with us. Nice, We've had, wow. I had I did the first interview with Lynette Squeaky Fromm from the Manson family wow. in 25 years, like a couple of months ago. Nice. Wow. All right, Bloody Mass. Uh, uh, listen real quick here. I just want to play this a little bit. Everyone's on drugs. This is from the, the CD that you're going to hear live. Peoria Pizza Works, April 19th, from Divine Dirt. That's Bloody's new band. Bloody Mess and the Scabs. 
back in the late 80s through the 90s. You owned it here. Everywhere, people would just pack it in for Bloody and the gang. And we're great to talk to you again today, sir. And I'm glad that you're well and healthy and happy and all that stuff. And we can't wait to see you. Maybe April 19th, you pop in. I don't know what day of the week that is. Do you know what day of the week that is by any chance? I do. It's a Friday evening. Uh, if you get in town a couple of days early, come see us in the studio, will you? Well, yeah, I'll get a hold before we get there. That'll be that'll be great, man. All right, buddy. Have a great week, and uh, we'll talk to you down the down the road. Best of luck. Talk to you soon. Thank you for your uh, time and the support, and, and uh, hello to everyone in Peoria. Yeah, bloody mess. You know that right. his radio show sounds really unique. Yeah, I, I, I've listened to portions of it a couple of times, and mm-hmm. it's really good. He, he's a uh, he's a good broadcaster. He's a good mm-hmm. broadcaster. Yeah, you know, isn't it interesting about all of that? I mean, those guys uh, uh, because it, it really if he's fifty two. You don't last at 52 if you don't take care of yourself. I yeah, mean, at you some got, point you, you have got, to You got to go, say, all right, all right, we got to do this. I want to keep doing this, and I got to be smart about look it. Look at Mick Jagger. Right, absolutely. He's like 120. Well, 